Linear relationships and bivariate data. How can you show differences between linear and nonlinear sets of bivariate data? Well, we'll get into that in a second. First, let's take apart these words a little bit so we know what we're looking at. First, we have what we call a line. That's part of what we've been covering in this section about lines and their relationships. And when we're talking about relationships, we're talking about the XY relationship. Now, this word bivariate, by meaning two, and this word comes, we can also see variable. We're talking about two variable data. Again, we're back to this X and Y discussion. So as long as we can understand what we're looking at, it will help us to be able to show differences between them. Let's take a look, though, at some definitions, some formal definitions before we continue. So bivariate data is a set of data that is made up of two paired variables. A linear relationship has two criteria or two requirements. The first requirement is the data forms a straight line, like a ruler or a piece of spaghetti. If I took a look at these two lines here, we can see that one is linear and one is not linear. If we look at this one on the left, we can see that it forms a straight line like a ruler. This one on the right that has this curved line, we can see it doesn't. So that would not be a linear relationship. So if we kind of put in here a little bit a coordinate plane, so let me get rid of this so we can do this comparison. Okay, I'm going to drop in here and I'm just going to draw a quick X and Y axis and I apologize for it not being so pretty. But let me grab this, get a copy of it. to have us a point of discussion here. Okay, we can see that both of these will have a y-intercept. Okay? They both will have a slope, but the slope is constant in a line. It's always going to be the same. It's always going to have the same rise and run, so it's always going to be the same. In a non-linear relationship, the slope will be changing. It might be small in one area, it might be larger in another, so we'll have different slope points. So that's what the differences are re with regards to slopes. So remember our two criteria for a linear relationship, that will help us to discern between the two. And we need to remember that if we're using the form y equals mx plus b, and we're talking about x to the first right now, uh, if we're in this format, we know this being slope and this being the y-intercept, that will help us also in order to help determine about linear relationships and what things look like. So let's take a look here at this example. In example one, it says the charges for a cheese pizza changes as the number of topping changes. Show the relationship is linear and find the equation for the relationship. So what we want to do is take a look at these numbers and see if there's a relationship. We know the two criteria, the data has to form a straight line. If we took a ruler, we could line them all up and lay them onto a line. So that's the first criteria. Second criteria is that the slope is constant between any two points. So let's take a list of our, two, our points here. So we have 0, 8, 1, 9.5, 2, 11, 5, and 15.5, 8 and 20. So these five points are on our line. So we're going to take a look at the slope and what we're going to use is we'll use this one top point and this middle one here because they're all whole numbers. We know that slope is represented as the change in the y's divided by the change in the x's or rise over run. So let's substitute values in. We'll do 11 take away 8 and 2 take away 0. Remember the ordered pairs are on top of each other. So 11 take away 8 is 3, and 2 take away 0 is 2. So we know the slope of this line is 3 over 2. Remember, it says it has to be constant. So let's try two other points. Let's take these two points here and determine the slope. So 20 take away 11, and 8 take away 2. If I reduce that, 20 take away 11 is 9, 8 take away 2 is 6, and if I reduce 9 over 6, I'm going to get back to 3 over 2. So we can see consistency. So we're showing that the relationship is linear. The next thing we need to do is find the equation for the relationship. So when we look at this slope, this 3 over 2, we have to remember what it means. It's talking about $3 for every two toppings of pizza. And if we read this graph over here to find the y-intercept, we see it over here at 8, and it represents $8. And that's our cheese pizza, because that's what we're starting with. So if I was to write an equation of this, y equals, I would take the slope, which is 3 over 2x, 
plus eight, which basically says the cheese pizza costs eight dollars and I'm going to pay three dollars for every two toppings that I'm going to add. So this kind of gives us a little bit more structure. Now we can take it down to be a uh, unit rate, but we're not too concerned with that right now. Now let's take a look at another problem here. And this says the graph shows the distance of a train traveling at a constant speed from San Diego to San Francisco. Use the graph to predict what the distance will be after seven and a half hours. Well, we're going to do once again, we're making a prediction. So we're going to kind of type up a few little steps over here when we make a prediction. The first thing we need to do when we make a prediction is we want to write an equation. Remember when we write an equation, we are thinking y equals mx plus b. And once so we write that, our second step, excuse me, our second step is going to be to substitute into the equation. So those are our two steps. We're going to predict, write an equation, y equals mx plus b, and then we're going to substitute into the equation. So let's figure out what our points are here so that we can find our slope. So this first point right here is represented by 0, 0,25. We can get another point here at 1. This will be 1 and 75. We get another point here at 2. 2 and 125. And I'll give it one more. 3 and 175. So if we take these points, and we'll take the first two, and we'll use those to find our slope. So slope is 75 minus 25 divided by 1 minus 0. Well, 75 minus 25 is 50, and 1 minus 0 is 1. We have to remember what this means with regards to the problem. We're talking about 50 miles in one hour. That's how fast the train is going to be traveling. Okay? Now, we could find slope several different ways, and I want to show that really quick here. This was one way, and it's foolproof. Find the points, take the rise and the run. Now another way you could have done it is by drawing a triangle, but you have to be very careful when you do this because the units aren't, aren't always the same. So you can see here the difference to go from 2 to 3 is 1, but here we're talking about going from 125 to 175. So we're talking a change of 50. So that's our change. So again, we see that 50 over 1. Another way is if these points are in order, we can change this, show this change by 1, and we can see this change by 50. So there's three different ways to figure out what our rise and run are. So we've got that much down. The next thing we have to do in our list of things to do to write this equation, we found that slope. Now we've got to find the y-intercept. Well, that's easy. We just take a look at it. And we see that it starts at 25. So b equals 25 is going to be our y-intercept. So if we go to write the equation, because that's what it tells us to do from the beginning, we're going to write y equals... And in the M spot, we're going to put our slope, which is 50, X. And in the B spot, we're going to put 25. So we just finished part one. And part two says substitute into the equation. Now we have to look at this. It says use the graph to predict what the distance will be after seven and a half hours. Now hours is X on the chart here. And we, the reason we're predicting is seven and a half is off the chart. So what we want to do is take that seven and a half, put it in place of the X, and solve. So y equals 50 times 7.5 plus 25. If we use our order of operations, 50 times 7.5 is 375. So we're going to add the 25 to that. And altogether, 375 plus 25 is 400. And the question is, what's the distance to this 400? And we can see it here also on our graph, is miles. So hopefully that'll explain a little bit about linear relationships and bivariate data.